Are you tired of buying your significant other flowers just to watch them die and end up in the trash? Are you incapable of keeping plants alive? I've got the answer for you. Metal flowers! Metal flowers are a true sign of your undying love. Because they don't die. And now you can get metal flowers for the low price of make them yourself. Cheapskate. Stop throwing your money away like a chump. No! Metal flowers, the flowers that last as long as your love. Hello YouTubers, I'm John Can, and today we're going to build metal flowers. One of the more important parts of this project is using the templates. We want to make some templates out of cardboard. Uh, the metal we're using to make the petals and the leaves of the flowers is very thin sheet metal that I got from the tin roof. Anything that you have that's thin and flexible can work for this. And you're going to use a set of tin snips to cut the petals out and the leaves when you get that far. It's important that when you're making your template you find a center on the petals, that way you have somewhere to mark and punch later for the hole for the stem. I'm going to use a terracotta pot for the flower, you can use whatever you'd like, here are the templates that fit in the pot. And you're going to trace the templates onto a piece of metal that we can cut it out in the proper shape so that it will fit in the pot. You can cut these shapes out however you're able to with a saw or a torch, I'm using a plasma cutter. The hole in the larger metal piece is going to be for the solar unit that we're going to install in this to make the flower light up. Make sure that you've measured your solar unit to fit accurately. Now we're going to cut out the leaves. They just need to be thin strips of the same sheet metal we used for the petals. Cut them to look kind of like a leaf with a point on the end. There's one leaf, and we're going to make six in total. Now I've got a piece of brake line that we're going to use for the stem of the flower. This stuff's readily available in any part store. It's pretty inexpensive. You're going to want to use a die grinder or a saw to cut four slits in the tip of this. Yeah, like that. Okay, so now you're going to cut three pieces of rod that are about an inch short of the interior height of the pot that you're going to use. These are going to go in between the small piece that fits at the bottom of the pot and the larger piece with the hole in it for the solar unit. This is where we get our solar powered LED. It is just one of the cheap garden light stake things that you can buy. We're going to measure this so that we can cut a couple pieces of thin flat steel to build a little basket to hold this into our big metal piece. The little pieces of flat strip that I'm using are actually left over from the last project. They are pieces of a windshield wiper blade. Now everything's cut and seems to fit good so it's on to grinding and sanding to smooth everything out. I'm just going to use an angle grinder to take the rough edges off of these round plates that we cut. You'll notice that I'm wearing a set of heavy gloves. I also have eye protection while I'm doing this. Please use safety equipment, boys and girls. And now I'm going to use a carbide burr tool and a die grinder to clean out the hole where the solar unit goes. The angle grinder works great for taking off the big stuff, but for smoothing out the edges and making a nice fine finish, I use a belt sander. And it's a good idea to use a little round file to clean out the inside of the stem where you've made your cut. And here I'm going to take the rough edges off of the petals and the leaves, make sure nobody will cut their fingers if they touch them. Once you've smoothed out all the rough edges, you're ready to start prepping for the final assembly. The pieces of sheet metal that you use to make the petals are really thin. It's hard to drill them. You wind up using a punch and a hammer to just punch a hole through them. I use a vise and just kind of give them this rotational movement. Once you've started the hole with the punch, you want to use a set of tin snips to clip the inside of the hole. That way your hole will expand evenly as you drive the punch through it. And all you're looking to do is make the hole big enough for the stem piece that you made out of the brake line to fit inside of it. 
Perfect, just like this. Now we're going to take the two pieces of flat steel, measure them and bend them in the proper fashion to make a basket for the solar unit. They should look like two giant staples when you're done. Okay, now we're ready to start welding. We're going to start off by attaching the three pieces of rod that we cut to the smaller circle. And this project doesn't require a great welder. You don't need to be a TIG welder. Just have a fair MIG welder and you should be able to be great with this. All you're looking to do is stick most of this together. There will be no load bearing capacity. Next, you want to attach your two pieces of flat steel to the larger piece where you made the opening earlier for the solar units. After that, you can attach the pedals to the stem. With the pedals and the leaves, you want to use a super low heat setting on your welder because it'll just burn right through that thin sheet metal. If you want to, you can use a vise and give the stem of the flower a little bit of a bend. That way, the head of the flower sits off to the side a little bit. We're going to drill a hole in the large round piece of metal, that way we have a place for the stem of the flower to go through. We'll weld that in there. And now you're ready to attach the bottom circle to the top circle. You've got that all put together, it should look something kind of like this. And we're ready to attach the leaves, once again low setting on the welder. It'll burn right through that thin sheet metal. You kind of make a puddle with your welder and then just wind up sticking the leaves into them and they stick well. And it's starting to look like we've built something. I sandblasted my flower. You can hand sand them or however you need to if you make sure the paint sticks. You just want to do something to make sure that you've got any old paint or oxidation off of your project. After you've sanded your flower, you want to wash it off with some kind of a solvent to get the dust off. Use a good primer on it, and you can paint your flower whatever color makes your heart content. For this flower, I went with brown, green, and kind of an orange color that I uh, shot with spray paint. If you want to paint yours by hand, they might turn out better. I don't know. I haven't tried that. While your paint's drying, it's a good time to start working on the LED light for the flower. You want to start off by taking apart the housing for the solar unit and pulling the battery and circuit board out of there. That way you can clip the LED off and add an extension wire between the LED light and the housing. You're going to want to use a pretty thin wire to go through the stem of your flower. Once you've got your wire cut to length, you want to go about 4 inches and cut it again. And you're going to attach one end to the LED, the long end, and the short end you're going to wind up soldering directly to the circuit board of the solar unit. It's important to note that the LEDs are typically polarity sensitive, so use two different colors of wire and make sure that you test this system before you put it together to make sure that you have your polarity correct. Now that you have all of your wiring soldered up and a little bit of heat shrink on one side of your wires, you can go ahead and put your housing back together and give everything a final test. Looks like the light comes on like it should. Give your wires a uh, final wrap of electrical tape to make sure that they're not going to chafe inside the stem and go ahead and run the wiring down through the stem. You want to push the LED down into the flower to where it is flush with the petals. Now we're going to solder the wires together in the base of the flower and put a little heat shrink on them. I like to tie everything off with a zip tie just to make sure it looks nice and clean. The last thing we're going to do is take one of these glass beads and set it into the four prongs of the stem that we built earlier. Uh, this works as a nice diffuser for the LED. And there we have our metal flower. The solar cell works really well on it. When it gets dark, the light comes on. Pretty cool. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'm John Can, and remember, if I can build it, so can you.